cetera, um, that you can actually ask him and, and he'll give you in great detail some of the uh, questions you may have regarding the strategies. So we're going to go ahead and do some disclosures and disclaimers for the next minute, and then we will get started. Thanks for joining us. Folks, why don't we go ahead and get started here? Uh, again, thanks for joining us, Tom Smith of Trade Monster, special guest Chuck Hughes. Um, let's go ahead and make sure Chuck is with us. Chuck, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me, Tom? You sound great, Chuck. Uh, great, great, nice and clear. Uh, again, I know a lot of you are going to have questions regarding Chuck's program. Chuck, um, we have a very short time slot and an oversubscribed uh, webinar today. So at the end of the webinar, Chuck is going to be putting up. Uh, a number where you can actually contact his support staff. So if you have questions that are specific to his programs, strategies, things of that nature, uh, please write down that number and contact information at the end of the webinar. Otherwise, Chuck, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you the reins. Why don't we go ahead and get started here? Okay, sounds good, Tom. And it's coming over now. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's Chuck Hughes here. Um, I want to thank Tom Smith for taking the time to set up these educational webinars each month. I really enjoy doing them. And today, uh, we're going to take a look at my what I call my high-accuracy option trading. Uh, I've been trading options for 30 years now, and I've developed some strategies for uh, selecting options with the best uh, profit potential, and I also use uh, money management rules and rules for selecting option strike prices, which we'll go over today. But uh, all this has resulted in high accuracy option trading, and I'm glad to show show you today actual trades that I've been taking recently, so that you can understand these uh, concepts. So we're going to cover high accuracy option trading. I have a few trades that you can take tomorrow. These are uh, stocks that are setting up for good um, uh, a good entry into a call option uh, purchase. And then at the end, as Tom mentioned, we'll have a, a Q&A session. So with my high accuracy option trading, I use what I call prime trade select to select a stock or ETF with the best uh, profit potential. And we'll uh, briefly go through the uh, prime trade select uh, process, and I'll show you how I use this to uh, identify stocks that have uh, good uh, profit potential. Then I use what I call the 1% rule to select an option strike price uh, that has a high probability of success. This is a very simple rule of thumb. I'll show you how we use this to select the option strike price. As you know, uh, once you find a stock or an ETF that you'd like to buy a call option, let's say it's on a, a price uptrend, uh, the next task is to select an option strike price, and there could be hundreds or even thousands of strike prices. So I have a very basic rule of thumb uh, to select the, the uh, option strike price um, that has a high probability of success. 
And then we'll look at what I call my 30% rule for walking away. That's my money management rule that I've used over the years um, to exit option uh, trades once they um, reach a 30% uh, uh, loss. And then we're going to take a look at rolling over successful trades to reduce your risk, uh, compound your returns, and to play with the house's money. And I, I currently have um, $872,000 in open trade profits uh, with an average return of 275%. And I'll show you my brokerage account statements um, that list all the option trades that I currently have. I started my options trading career uh, 30 years ago, and I developed a basic trend following system that I still use today to select uh, directional option trades. And I started out with um, a $4,600 trading account. That's all I could muster up at the time. Um, but within my first two years of option trading, I made over $460,000 in profits. Uh, which is actually more than I made the previous six years as an airline pilot. So I've been doing this for a while, and I found this was a great um, source uh, of income, uh, kind of like a backup. And as it turned out, in my case, uh, I used it as my full-time job after um, I went out on a medical as, as an airline pilot. So the, the, the option strategies really came in handy when my primary source of income was uh, gone, and uh, the option strategies that I developed have produced over $6 million in actual profits. Here's um, a copy of those uh, tax returns those first two years when I started out small, and um, as I said, I had over $460,000 in profits those first two years. I've also... Um, been entering trading contests. I uh, entered the U.S. Trading Championship uh, back in the 1980s when that when that was around, and then um, the, uh, then I entered the World Trading Championship and I won that seven times. Now that's a real money contest, so the results are audited before being posted on the sponsor's website. And so far this year, I have 120 uh, percent actual return which puts me in second place the last time uh, I looked. So uh, I'm not trying to brag here, but I just want to give you some background on my option trading just so you get an idea um, of the uh, strategies that I use day in, day, in, day out uh, to produce these kind of profits. And as I said, I've, I've been trading for 30 years, so uh, I developed these over a long time period through all different types of market conditions. So let's talk about the risk in general for trading options. Um, options um, have more profit potential than buying a stock or an ETF, but along with that comes uh, leverage. And of course, when you employ leverage, your risk also increases. So Let's just take a look at what we're up against when we trade options. Uh, what I have here is a um, a call option uh, option chain for Home Depot. And at the time, Home Depot was trading at 77.73. So the at the money call would have been the 77 and a half strike call. So, and this uh, one I'm taking a look at ex uh, expires in 67 days. So. If you were to buy the at the money call for Home Depot, uh, you would have paid uh, 320 to 330 uh, bid and ask on that option. So let's take a look at the risk you incur when you buy an option. And what I'm showing you now is a call option purchase calculator. And this calculator will calculate the profit potential for this trade, uh, assuming Home Depot was trading at 77.73, um, the option strike price was 77 and a half, and the premium was 325. And this will calculate the profit potential based on various assumptions in the change in Home Depot stock at option expiration 
in this example, from a 10% increase in uh, price to a 20% decrease. So we can see whenever you purchase a, a, an option, you're risking 100% uh, of your uh, capital. And in this case, if the uh, Home Depot stock was flat at option expiration, you have a 92% loss. And if Home Depot stock was down at all, you have a 100% loss. So that's what you're up against when you're trading options and you wanna just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna sh show you ways that, uh, that can help you avoid this 100% loss. You don't ever wanna incur 100% loss when you're trading because uh, that could knock you out of the game uh, early. <clears throat> so the goal of the high accuracy option trading is to avoid those large losses, which uh, can occur pretty easily. This is a price chart, daily price chart of the uh, VIX uh, uh, from about uh, July of 2012. This was taken up through April of this year. And you can see um, each one of these volatility spikes is an increase in the VIX index. Now this measures fear and each one of these spikes rep represents a market sell-off. So you can see um, there's been quite a few market sell-offs. So if you're trying to time an option purchase uh, in this type of market, you could easily, um, that could easily result in 100% loss if your timing is off. So um, this, is, this is what you're up against when you want to trade options. Uh, you're, you've got this timing risk. And of course, if you're buying call options and you have these uh, sell-offs, then there's a, a, a good chance that you're gonna get stopped out and lose 100% of your money. So let's let's take a look at what, uh, the first step in high accuracy option trading. It's what I call prime trade select. And there's three steps in prime trade select for selecting the stocks with the uh, highest profit potential. Uh, step one is we wanna determine the price trend of a stock. And I, again, I use the, the same trend following system I've been using for decades. Uh, to determine the price trend. Uh, step two is on any given day, there could be hundreds of stocks in a price uptrend. So with step two, we want to confirm the price trend and determine the extent of the buying or selling pressure and then isolate the very best profit opportunities. And then step three is we want to select a low risk entry point using the Keltner channels. So we want to purchase call options on stocks that are on a prime trade select buy signal and then purchase put options on stocks that are on a prime trade select sell signal. And prime trade select works in both bull and bear markets and was very profitable during the last two bear markets. Um, of course, right now the market's trending up. We have uh, bullish positions, but that can change. And we were heavily short during the last two bear markets using prime trade select. Okay, step one is we want to use the EMA trend following system to determine the price trend. And uh, the goal of trend following is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of the stock. And that allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. And when you use a system like that, uh, you eliminate that emotional decision-making, which can be very helpful uh, once you start maintaining a discipline of following the trend. And I use, uh, to determine the price trend, I use the 50-day exponential moving average in relation to the 100-day exponential moving average. So when the 50-day, which is the shorter term EMA, is above the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a buy signal. And if the 50-day EMA is below the 100-day, then that stock is on a sell signal. So let's look at an example of an option trade that I took 
using uh, Prime Trade Select. This is a daily uh, price chart of Cigna, the insurance company, and these vertical uh, red and black vertical lines represent the daily price movement of the stock. And then this blue line right here is the 50-day exponential moving average line, and the red line is the 100-day exponential moving average line. So we can see um, back in September, the um, blue line, the 50-day EMA, crossed above the 100-day EMA. So at this point, Cigna was on a buy signal. And as long as that 50-day EMA is above the 100-day EMA, then Cigna is on a uh, buy signal. So on any given day, as I mentioned, there could be hundreds of stocks on a buy signal. So um, I'd like to confirm the price trend, and I use two indicators for that. I use on balance volume and the new 52-week high list. And the on balance volume line is this line here in the lower chart, and the volume precedes the price movement. So we want to see the uh, volume, this unbalanced volume line sloping up uh, to confirm this uh, uptrend in the stock. So I'd like to take a look, look at that. And we just want to see the unbalanced vo volume line simply sloping up to confirm this price trend. And then I also use uh, the new 52-week high list to actually start my uh, trade selection process. I, I refer to this list uh, regularly, and stocks that are making the new 52-week high, they're in a very powerful uptrend, and they tend to continue that price uptrend. So that's actually a good place to start your uh, trade selection is just to look at that new 52-week high list. And those stocks that are on that list are in very strong uptrend. So that's a good place to start your search. Here's an example, Cigna, and we can see that uh, the stock uh, in this time frame was making uh, a series of new 52-week highs. So that, along with the upsloping on balance volume line, uh, confirmed the price uptrend. So the third step in Prime Trade Select, we want to select a low risk entry point using the uh, Keltner channels. And uh, the Keltner channels um, can be used to help time your trade entry and exit points. Um, they also provide high probability uh, buy and sell signals, and they can also help you select the option uh, strike price. And here's a, a daily price chart of Home Depot. And um, this, this line here is the daily price movement of Home Depot stock. And then we can see uh, the blue line at the top here is the upper Keltner channel. Uh, the middle line, the dotted line here, is the middle Keltner channel. And the lower line, blue line here is the lower Keltner channel. And the um, the center line, the uh, dotted line here, that's the 20-day uh, exponential moving average of the stock. And then the upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past 10 days drawn at an equal distance from the uh, middle line. So that's how the Keltner channels are uh, constructed. And they act as an overbought, oversold indicator. So if a stock is trading near the upper channel, uh, the stock is getting overbought. And if it trades near the lower uh, Keltner channel, then the stock is getting oversold. So uh, we can see in this uh, daily price chart of Home Depot, we can see when the stock gets above the uh, upper channel, it's getting overbought. And then it usually retraces back to the middle or lower uh, channel, and when the stock gets near the lower channel, it's getting oversold, so then it usually rallies back up. So we can see here, oversold rallies back up. It got overbought here, um, 
uh, declined back towards the lower channel, uh, got oversold, and then um, went back up above the upper channel. So they, the uh, Keltner channels act as an overbought, oversold indicator, and that can help us time our entries on when to uh, enter a, an option trade. So let's look at um, an example of an option trade uh, using the Keltner channels. And again, this is the daily price chart of Cigna. And we can see it goes from uh, lower left to upper right. So obviously it's in a strong price uptrend. And the question is, if you didn't own Cigna, at what point do you jump in? What point do you pull the trigger? So I use the Keltner channels to help me do that. And we can see that um, when Cigna got oversold here, uh, it rallied, got oversold here. And right here, I went ahead and uh, bought a call option when the uh, price retraced near this lower Keltner channel. And my brokerage confirmation shows that I bought uh, the Cigna July 50 call on June 3rd, which was right here. So you can see uh, Cigna was getting uh, oversold at this point. Um, I didn't have a position in it, so I wanted to enter um, enter a uh, an option position on Cigna, but I wanted to wait till it became a little bit oversold, and that set up a great uh, buying opportunity, um, and Cigna didn't really retrace after I bought this call option. So uh, this is just an example of how you can use these Keltner channels to help you uh, time your entries. <clears throat> Here's another more recent um, example. Uh, this is for Caterpillar, and again, you can see a very strong price uptrend. The question is, uh, if you wanted to take an option position, where do you jump in? And we can see right here, uh, Caterpillar, this was back in May, became um, oversold at this point, and I went ahead and bought the uh, Caterpillar 70-strike uh, call at 32.95. So I was just waiting. I didn't want to jump in when Caterpillar was trading near this upper Keltner channel because it was getting overbought. So I waited it for it to uh, retrace near the uh, lower channel and went ahead and bought a 70-strike uh, call option. Here's another example. This is for uh, Wells Fargo. Again, we can see the stock's on a very powerful uptrend. Um, I wanted to wait till it became uh, oversold, so I waited till uh, beginning of April, April here and around April 9th. Uh, when the um, stock was trading near that lower Keltner channel, I went ahead and bought uh, the 35 strike call. So on April 9th, right in about here, I went ahead and bought the 35 strike call. And here's one more example. This is for the um, pro shares, the S&P 500 leveraged fund. And we can see, uh, Back in April, again, uh, I was waiting for a retracement. It retraced back down towards the lower Keltner channel in April, and I went ahead and bought the 65-strike uh, call. So by using the uh, Keltner channels, uh, I was able to get low-risk entries, and these stocks did not retrace um, after I uh, jumped in and bought my call option. Uh, so the Keltner channels enable me to get a low risk entry and that can help prevent getting stopped out of your position uh, and incurring a loss. So uh, I like to use these Keltner channels to uh, time my uh, entries. So here's, um, here's a few examples of stocks that I own that um, have just recently uh, retraced. This is Johnson & Johnson, um, and we can see uh, it's on a strong price uptrend. Uh, just recently, 
uh, based on earnings has declined near that lower channel. So that's one I would be looking at to uh, buy a call option. There's another one, uh, Union Pacific, um, on a strong price uptrend. Uh, it's retraced near the uh, middle Keltner channel, so that's setting up a buy. And there's one more here. This is Halliburton. I've owned this one for a while. And we can see another strong price uptrend, and it's just uh, retraced towards that middle Keltner channel, uh, setting up a buy opportunity. So those are I just threw those out there. Those are stocks you can look at to uh, enter a call option um, purchase. So let's talk about uh, the second part of high accuracy trading, and that is selecting an option strike price. And I use what I call the 1% rule to select an option strike price that has a high probability of success. So once you select a stock or an ETF that you want to take a position in, uh, there could be hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to choose from. So selecting the strike price is just as important as the trade selection itself, in my opinion. And let's just go over option basics. Um, option premiums consist of time value and intrinsic, intrinsic value. And of course, options, they lose all their time value at expiration. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. So you always want to keep that in mind that that time value is decaying every day as you get closer to option expiration. So due to these time decay characteristics of options, when you're buying an option, you want to uh, minimize the time value because that's going to decay to zero, and you want to maximize the intrinsic value. And the way you can do that is by selecting uh, the option strike price um, that has a time value of less than 1% of the stock price per month. And if you do that, that will allow you to minimize the time value and maximize the intrinsic value. So uh, as an example, let's say you were going to buy a one-month option and the stock was trading at 100, you'd want to limit the time value portion of that option to one point or less. And if you were going to buy a two-month option and the stock's trading at 100, you'd want to limit the time value to two points or less. So if you limit the time value to 1% of the stock price, then the stock only has to increase 1% in order for your trade to break even and, and start making money. So this is going to have a, a much higher probability of success than buying an at-the-money or out-of-the-money uh, strike price that requires, let's say, a 6 to 10% increase in the price of the stock just to break even. So we want to, we want to be able to start profiting after the stock goes up 1% instead of uh, 6 to 10%, which you would typically pay for an out-of-the-money or at-the-money uh, option uh, strike. I'll show you some examples of this. Uh, here's an example of out-of-the-money call purchase. Um, at the time, Apple stock was trading at 173.25, and we can see the 185 strike um, which was, which, which was above the stock price, so this was an out-of-the-money call, was trading at 315. So um, Apple stock um, would have to increase up to 188.15 to break even on this trade. So you take, the way you figure that is you just take the strike price, um, you add the premium to it, and then the stock has to go up to 188.15 to break even, before you would start making money in this. And this was a one month option. And that translates to an 8.6% move in the stock in one month just to break even. So um, odds are you're not gonna get those kind of moves that often. It's possible you could have an 8.6% price increase in one month, but it's, it's highly unusual. So that's why buying these out of the money uh, options, I think, are, are too high risk, and um, 
could easily result in a 100% loss. So we can see with this, uh, with Apple trading at 173 at the time, buying the 185 strike call at 315, if the stock is um, up 5% or is flat or is down at all, we're going to have 100% loss. So um, you don't ever want to risk 100%. So uh, you know, purchasing this option would be very high risk, and um, the stock would actually have to increase 8.6% uh, before you even break even on this trade. So that's a very low probability uh, trade. So let's look at a, over the same time period, let's look at a uh, in-the-money call purchase. And again, with Apple trading at 173, the 150 strike call was trading at 2460. And we can see um, with the call option purchase calculator um, that if Apple at the time, if it if it stayed flat, we'd only lose 5.5% 5, 5 as opposed to 100% loss for the out of the money call. And if Apple stock uh, goes up 2.5%, we'd have a, a return, 12% to return. And uh, if it goes up 5%, we have a 29% return uh, as opposed to 100% loss with the out of the money option. So I like to uh, trade these in the money options that have a higher probability of success. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, Apple stock only had to move up 7 tenths of 1% um, in order for that trade to break even and start making money as opposed to the added money call example that we just saw that requires an 8.6% move just to break even. Okay, and here's another example um, of using the 1% rule. Uh, we saw where Cigna stock retraced near that lower Keltner channel, and um, I went ahead and bought the 50 strike call option, and that would be considered an in-the-money option because uh, at the time, Cigna was trading at 66.71. So I bought the 50-strike call at 17 points. Stock was trading at 66.71. So this is the uh, call option purchase calculator, and um, the calculator also calculates the time value portion of the option and the intrinsic value portion. So with this option, this in the money option, with the stock at 66 and the 50 strike call, uh, this option only has 29 cents of time value. So um, I was able to uh, minimize the time value in this case and maximize the intrinsic value. This option is mostly intrinsic value. So we can see if um, Cygnus stock was flat at option expiration at 66.71, I'd only lose 1.7%, and um, that that's a lot less than if if I bought an out out of the money call that would lose 100% uh, if the stock stayed flat. So I like to limit my risk with these options, and um, in this in this particular case, um, Cigna only had a Increased 29 cents. Um, the, the Cigna stock only had to increase 29 cents for this trade to break even and start making money. So that's only a four tenths of one percent move. So um, any increase in the stock above 29 cents uh, would result in a profit. So the stock only has to go up 29 cents, and I'm already starting to make money. So that's how I like to uh, trade uh, options. So we can see that these in-the-money call purchases have a much higher probability of success than an at-the-money at or out-of-the-money purchase. Um, the intrinsic value of an option increases one point for each point increase in the stock price above the um, strike price of the, uh, of the call. So um, we can see that with a, with a four-tenths of percent increase in the stock price to break even, that we're going to have a much higher probability of success than, say, if we bought it out of the money that had a 
it required a six to ten percent increase in the stock price to break even. So, I like to trade these in the money options with uh, very low time value. Now, let's talk about uh, the money management rule that we use uh, for option purchases. And if an option, if you purchase an option and the option starts to uh, decline in price, once it reaches a 20% decline, then I'll, I'll start making a mental note to exit that trade if it hits a 30% loss. So I give the options, because they're leveraged, I give them more room than I would, let's say, a stock. Uh, so I'll exit a stock usually with a, if it has a 7 to 10% decline. Uh, with an option, they're more leveraged, so I give them a little more room. But once you have a 20% loss in that option that you purchased, I'll, I'll make a mental note, and then I'll start uh, looking to exit that trade if it gets around 30%. And this can help prevent incurring a 100% loss. So you want to avoid these big losses in your account. It's going to be really hard to make up big losses like that. So uh, you want to use this money management rule when you're trading options um, to help prevent that 100% loss. If you have a 50% uh, loss in an option um, and you want to make up for that, the next trade you, you take has to increase 100% in order for you just to break even from a 50% loss. So you always want to keep that in mind that you don't want to take these big losses because it could take a long time to make up for big losses. So we want to use this uh, money management rule at all times and simply um, exit a trade um, before it hits uh, a 30% loss. Here's an example. Um, uh, this is actually a trade I, I took yesterday. I bought uh, the J&J &J, um, 80 strike calls at 23.72. So um, if the price of this option drops 20% 20, 20 to around 1898, um, I'd make a mental note at that point to, to start watching it. And then if the option drops 30% uh, to around, in this example, to around 1652 on a closing basis, then I would s simply exit the trade. So um, the drops, 20%, you want to start looking uh, at exiting the position, and then if it drops to 30%, then you uh, definitely want to exit before uh, before you lose 100%. So <laughs> this helps prevent uh, the total loss of the option premium. Uh, as I mentioned, that can be very hard to make up over time if you have a couple of these big losses. Then you got to have uh, really big gains just to break even. So you always want to keep this in mind when you're buying uh, options. Chuck, as a rule of thumb, are you using a 30% guiding premise, if you will? I mean, we have some attendees asking that. Is that, is that true for all your positions, that 30% drop? Uh, th that, that's correct for option purchases, yes. Uh, for option purchases, if it drops 30% from your purchase price, then you, then you definitely want to exit. And let's talk about another uh, money management aspect of option trading, and that's uh, rolling over options. And what I like to do is um, if the stock is still on a prime trade select buy signal at expiration, then uh, I'll probably roll that option over um, and once you roll over, I want to show you a couple of examples here. Uh, when you roll over uh, an option and you have a profit in it, that helps reduce your risk of the new position, allows you to compound your returns, and allows us to play with the house's money. So uh, this is another aspect of option trading that I've been using for many years is the rollover. and. Um, you want to check that stock at, when it gets close to expiration and see if that's if it still qualifies as a buy, then you want to think about rolling that over 
into a new position. And uh, when you do that, obviously it reduces your risk uh, and allows you to compound your returns and play with the house's money. So um, here's an example uh, of two rollovers I did recently. This was uh, for Google. Um, I closed out uh, the Google 950 call. This was before the uh, uh, this was before the stock split when it, when it split into the A and C shares. So on this trade, I had a seven thousand six hundred seventy dollar loss uh, gain. I had a seven thousand six hundred seventy dollar profit on this Google option. And here's an example of XLV. This is the healthcare ETF and I had June options. I had the 45 strike call. I had 36 of them. So here's I had profits on um, when I at option expiration. Uh, I closed out the 45 call and then I rolled that over. So I had profits on both the Google and this XLV trade. So uh, with the XLV. Um, I simply rolled over to the uh, September 45 call and my brokerage confirmation shows I bought 36 of the September 45 calls at 1569. So I had a total profit when I exited those 36 June calls, I had a total profit of 31,500. So we can see the new cost of the September calls was 56,515. So, um, this allowed me to reduce that risk of having 56,515 at risk. Uh, and now I only have 25,000 at risk because I rolled over that uh, $31,000 profit into the new position. So this will allow me to uh, compound my returns over time as I start reducing the overall cost basis of my options by rolling over. And here's um, an example of the Google rollover, uh, the new option. Um, I bought the uh, December 450 call at 146.93. So the new option cost 14,697. Uh, I had a $7,670 profit. So now that <clears throat> reduces my cost basis or my risk. Uh, from 14,000 now down to 7,000. So I reduced my risk by uh, 50% and that allows me to uh, also compound my returns. <clears throat> so I just want to <clears throat> show you my brokerage account statements. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I have um, $872,000 in open trade profits right now for these option purchases uh, with an average return of 275%. Um, so I'll just show you those <clears throat> brokerage statements. Now these are just option purchases. I also have option spread trades on, uh, but this is just the option purchase uh, portion of my portfolios. And in this account, I have a, a $227,000 open trade profit. And in my second account, I have a $644,000 <clears> open trade profit. So <clears throat> total um, open trade profits right now, <clears throat> excuse me, of $872,000, average return of 275%. So the uh, high accuracy um, strategy is really working well in uh, the current market. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, and I also have statements. I like to look at statements over different time frames. That kind of uh, that kind of gives you a, a, a different perspective. And um, these are statements over the past five years or so, where I had uh, 1.8 million dollars in profits uh, using this high accuracy uh, strategy. Uh, average return of 85 um, percent. 183 wins, 17 losers, 91% accuracy. So this this just gives you uh, an idea over the years uh, what this option, the high high accuracy option strategy can produce. So um, it's good to look at different 
time frames, you get a different perspective uh, on how the strategy has done over time. Uh, in this account, I had a $254,000 profit average return of 114%. So this just gives you an idea <clears throat> over time that this uh, strategy has been working well. Okay, that ends the uh, presentation for today. And <clears throat> if you're interested in the high accuracy option trading strategy, um, I make uh, recommendations for this uh, strategy through my weekly option advisory. And if you want to look at the uh, current uh, profit results, uh, if you just go to weeklyoptionalert.com and click trade results, It'll show the open trade results for these various strategies. You can see we have option purchase uh, strategy, we have covered calls, <clears throat> and we have option spreads. So uh, if you want to just get an idea of how these strategies are performing, uh, if you just log on to weeklyoptional.com, click trade results, you can get an update on the various uh, strategies and how they're doing. So, uh, that ends my uh, presentation. I'd be glad to take any uh, questions. Uh, Chuck, just so you know, we have probably literally hundreds of questions. <laughs> so your support, your support staff is going to probably be busy over the next couple of days. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that keep getting asked over and over again. And okay. one of them happened to be that 30% rule and the loss rule during the trading day. Do you right. ever sell it immediately or do you wait till the close of the day? Uh, I normally will wait to the close, uh, and uh, right now the uh, VIX is pretty low, so there's not a lot of volatility, but there are periods where it can, the markets can be very volatile, and uh, I usually like to exit uh, on the close. In other words, <clears throat> if, it's, if it's dropped 30% uh, from my purchase price and we're getting near the close, uh, then I'll simply exit the trade. And I've had cases when the market is volatile, I've had cases where during the day it might have been down 30% or even more, but then it came back. And that that can happen in volatile markets. So um, I'll just watch it uh, towards the close. And if we get near that 30% uh, loss point and we're near the close, then I'll, then I'll exit the trade. But during the trading day, uh, I normally won't exit. I'll wait till we get uh, near the close before uh, I exit the trade. Because as I mentioned, sometimes it has dipped down below that 30% loss only to come roaring back. And you were you were glad you held the position and it could have even turned into a profit. So generally just wait towards you get near the close to uh, uh, take a look at that and see if it's near the 30% uh, loss rate. <clears throat> okay, this is, this question's came up in a couple of different forms, Chuck, but people are talking about your 52-week buy list. Do you ever use seasonality or cyclicals in congruence with that list, or are you just focused on that 52-week list momentum before you put on the option strategy? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I did a lot of research over the years on seasonal patterns, and what I found is seasonal patterns uh, they work till they don't work <laughs> and some years they work great other years they don't work great so um, I don't really use those anymore but if a stock makes a new 52 week high even if you're in a bear market you want to be watching that stock because um, if it makes a new 52 week high that means it's in a very powerful uptrend and those are the stocks you want to focus on. So that that type of strategy will work anytime, even even in bear markets, as opposed to seasonality that that could work one year and not work the next year. So um, I don't rely on the seasonal patterns anymore. I simply uh, use my indicators, and one of the best is that new 52-week high list. Um, and you want to watch those stocks that. Uh, are on that list frequently uh, because they're simply uh, the stocks that are in a very strong uptrend and that uptrend tends to continue. So uh, we've had great success by 
uh, following that new 52 week high list. The last question I have for you, Chuck, and it's kind of a general question is, um, how do you find so much time to manage your portfolio? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it it is uh, it does it does take some time, um, and um, I usually do that at night when the, you know the market's closed and I have some time to think about it, and uh, I kind of just take a look at how each position's doing. I'll, I'll look at the uh, the stock in relation to the uh, Keltner channels and. Um, you know, I, I just try to monitor it each day, or spend a little time each day to stay on top of it. Um, I just recently, uh, I held TJX options for a long time, and that was one of our better performing uh, stocks, but I noticed it started to uh, deteriorate, and um, when it actually went into a price downtrend, and, you know, we, we simply exited our position. So, um, it's a type of thing. My my trades in general are longer term. I usually um, trade one, two, three months out, and I even have leaps options. So my my trading's longer term. So it's not really urgent that I stay on top of the markets all the time. Uh, but I will I will look at the positions on a regular basis uh, just to uh, see how each position's doing. Uh, but it's not it's not the type of thing that I have to. Uh, stay glued to my uh, monitor and watching the markets every day because my my trading is generally uh, longer term. Chuck, this question is for me. I know you're a seven-time world trading champion, and I know you're currently in the contest. How are you faring right now? Uh, the last time I checked, Tom, I was in second place. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to win it this year, um, and uh, I'm using the same strategies that I uh, talk about in my webinars each month in that uh, in that trading contest and that's a great way to um, measure your trading performance because it's real-time money and and it shows up on a leaderboard so uh, it's it's a great way to uh, validate uh, so to speak your uh, strategies and how you're doing in your